thought I was part and parcel. Now, if the home cell had been strong, do you no. We used to say we are 500 in here. Look around, look at the spaces. Right? Every week we have approximately five new people that are coming to you. But why aren't we exploding in numbers? Symptom of a malnutritioned church. Right? Symptom of a malnutritioned church. Okay. Let's continue. So we've talked about the church. Who's community? Community is which side? This side. How does the, ch the cell group benefit the community? Uh, to the community, the cell group helps in such a way that we reach out like easily to people who are not coming to church. Uh, what I've seen with believers is that uh, no matter how much money you may have, or, but people do admire a life of a Christian. So sometimes you want to invite someone to church, but they will tell you on Sunday, I can't make it. I have uh, this and that to do. And it's not easy sometimes to just take the whole day for somebody to say, let's go to church. But it's easy to invite somebody for a Bible study. That's when we can reach out to souls. Wonderful. I was hoping the Amphic students would say this because they wrote all this in their paper. Uh, cell groups, they bring Christian activity where it belongs, to the home. They are effect, an effective method of salting the whole city, neighborhood by neighborhood. Right? The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Now, if you read the book written by our father, it says the church and political responsibility. It says that when a nation is going down, don't blame the politicians. Blame the church. Because the church's responsibility is there to do what? To salt the earth. To prevent decay. All right. Individual. How does the home cell benefit you as an individual? I think as an individual, the home cell uh, helps me to grow in the things of God, especially in the word of God. Because when you are at the home cell, you are able to ask questions in a way you don't understand in terms of the word of God, number one. Number two, I think the... Um, the home cell benefits me and in, in a way that you, in, you get to connect to people individual on a personal level. They get to know you, you get to know them better, which helps you, especially when you get into troubles, even when you have celebrations or whatever, like funerals you're talking about. So that helps me directly. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. It says here, yeah, they are done for fellowship it is easy to fellowship with eight people than with a hundred. Now, try it after service today. Try, try it. Try and have deep fellowship. You know, sometimes elders taking one hand with the other, talking with the other, you know, say, bye with this one, I'll talk to you next week, and this. You, you can't. You can't. They are done for fellowship uh, they are small enough for people to know each other. I was embarrassed last week. There was someone who, was, who wanted to pay some money, and then she said to me, Elder, do you know my name? And, and, and I, I knew she had told me before. I knew she had told me before, but then I said, Yes, I know your name. And then at the back, I started thinking, What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Truth be told. Truth be told. If you can memorize 400 names in here, you are really good. You are really good. Everyone can participate as much as I'm trying for everyone to participate, but it's almost impossible. I can't even reach 10% of the whole congregation here. But it enables everyone to what? To participate. Make everyone feel belonging. Right? Everybody wants to belong to the church. 
I asked uh, at the visitor's lounge last week and somebody said something very profound. I said, how did you know about uh, Forward in Faith? And they said, this person invited me, this person invited me. Of all the people that I talked to in the visitor's lounge, no one has ever said to me they came to church because they saw a flyer. No one. No one I've ever heard say, I, I came to church because I saw it. He says, I came to church because somebody invited me. A personal invitation is much more stronger than a mass invitation. That's what cell groups can do. All right. Now, some people are thinking it's, it's impossible, it's difficult to be able to, to, be able to do this. Uh, where's Tabitha? Maim Dingi, yes. Can you, can, you, can you come up here? She's going to give a testimony of how we started the home cell in International City. Before she was known as Mrs. Mdingi. Hear this. Thank you, Elder. <laughs> uh, morning, church. So, um, 16 years back, I had just moved to Dubai and I got a job and moved into company accommodation. So where I was staying, I was sharing with a lady from another country and a different religion from mine, from ours. Um, so there was need for us to start a cell group in international city where we were staying. I was sharing this apartment. It was a studio apartment with a lady from a different nationality. And you can imagine when I was, um, I wanted to volunteer for the cell group to be done in my apartment. So it was a bit difficult for me um, thinking, okay, if I ask this lady that I want to have a cell group or a church activity in the place where we were staying together, was she going to agree? And by the grace of God, I went to her, spoke to her, and she agreed for us to meet. So by that time, the church was not as big as it is now. We were, it was just a few of us. And when we started the cell group, we were around four. It was me and three of my brothers in Christ, and we were not discouraged. We wanted to do it. We wanted to do this. We knew that we were going to grow by the grace of God. So we started attending, and our elder, every Tuesday, uh, whenever he was available, he would come, encourage us in the word of God, teach us the word of God, and also, he was there to just strengthen us in the Lord. Amen. And he was there also to strengthen us even in the situations which we were facing. You know, when, we, when you move to a new place, it is difficult for you to settle. It's not that easy. You come here with expectations. And what you get is not what you expected. So it took us time to settle, but the elder was there to strengthen us. He was there. We were there to learn the word of God, yes, but he was also there to, you know, push us. You are going to do it. You can make it here. It will take time. You just need to be patient. So I thank the Lord that, you know, after a couple of months, Atlantis Hotel opened and a crew from Zimbabwe came. They were staying in International City and our cell group grew from four people to we were above 10. Elder Sharon was one of them and we grew. Uh, we started alternating from my place to the Atlantis accommodation. So I just want to thank the Lord because in that cell group, uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we were being taught about the four pillars, um, 
I would like to believe that when, when it was just the four of us, one of the things that kept us going and that pushed the brothers to come every Tuesday was the breaking of bread part. <laughs> Because I would, make it, I would make sure that I prepare a meal, a proper meal. Because knowing, you know, you're staying, in, you're staying in a company accommodation and some of these places you are not allowed to cook. But in my apartment, we had the freedom, uh, we had everything. We were living, you know, it was good. So I would prepare a meal for my brothers and make sure that they have a proper meal when they come. After we meet, after we learn the word of God, we have a proper meal. So that was one of the things that kept them coming. <laughs> it will go on and on, but I want to demonstrate something. She was sleeping on one of those mattresses that are like 1.2 meters across. There was no chair, there was no nothing. So for us to have the home cell, we had to sit on the, t on the bed, all of us back to back, going all around the thing. But the point I'm trying to emphasize here, the point I'm trying to emphasize here, even though we're a multitude, that some in our midst, they can't cook. They can't have a hot meal. They can't, there's n we can't give them a hot meal here. We, 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 we can't meet all the needs, but the need of home sales is critical. We used to be 500 in this region. Now we are less. Right? Okay, let me not. All right, let's, let's continue. Let's continue. All right, I've got a few minutes to go, then we can finish. All right, so... How forward in faith started? How forward in faith started? I know we read it every May, but um, we must pay attention to certain things. What happens? Because some people are saying, you, we don't need a villa. We don't need a huge apartment. We don't forget. In fact, it's difficult in villas and all those things. What you only need, before I even get to this, what are the three things that you need for a person to lead a home cell? Ms. Chidi, three things, three qualities to lead a home cell. You know, all the Amphic students, none of them have answered the principle. They haven't answered. Okay, number one, most of us, you need to be born again. Number one. Number two, you need to be willing. Number three, you need to be teachable. Did you hear anywhere where it said you need to be a leader? No. No, you don't need to be a leader to lead a home cell. Right. When it pleased God that he should reveal himself to me, it happened this way. When my mother visited another place, I always say that the first home cell leader in forward in faith was Mbuya Dokas. She was the first one. When my mother visited another place, she heard about the last punishment for all sitters. She came back in the evening as we were in a small round touched hut. Surrounding a fire, she began to relate the story to us. When I went to bed, I had a sleepless night. That night was the night of my calling to seek God. In a home cell, an apostle can be called. Let me read that again. That night was the night of my calling. Not in Bindura. Not in Vumba. No, 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 no. Not at 593. In the home cell, in the heart. So a great evangelist can arise from a small home cell. In the morning, I went to my mother and said... Can you show me a man who can explain to me about God? You don't have to know Hebrew, Greek, or all the books of the world. You don't have to know them. The mother even said that I, I don't even know about all this. But guess what? A great apostle rose up. All it needs is that are you born again? Are you willing and are you teachable? 
My mother said, you know very well in this place there is no preacher and no church. If a difficult question comes in, in a home, so you just say, don't worry, we can call the evangelist, we can call the pastor. Power of a home cell. Okay, now, let's get to uh, the vision of forwarding faith. The title says, do not build your own kingdom from the, from the uh, African apostle. On the last big Sunday of 1979 and the last Sunday before Rhodesia became Zimbabwe, eight pastors took turns in baptizing 1,111 new converts. While Ezekiel Guti was giving a prophetic message to the 7,000 who came to hear the word, the message was from Proverbs 14.34. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin reproveth the nation. During the baptizing of so many people, Guti became excited and started to plan the building of a big center. All the plans were approved and ready. The believers were ready to give sacrificially for the building. A contractor had been engaged to start the construction. But at the 11th hour, God came to Guti and said, Ezekiel, do not build your own kingdom. Do not spend money on one building. Spread my kingdom all over. Spread my kingdom all over. Spread my kingdom all over. Amen. Page 106. A new vision. In 1981, because of the heavy workload in Zimbabwe, Guti had to go to America to rest. It is impossible for him to rest well in Zimbabwe because everybody knows him there and wants to speak to him or have him preach wherever he goes. At that time, everything was being done from one office decisions, pastoral support, and it was too much. After returning from America, he was sitting outside his house in Mutare when the spirit came upon him and gave him a vision of the future of the work God had allowed him to begin. He called for his wife, Yuna, and she wrote down all the details as he gave them from his vision. He called the pastors together and shared the vision, afraid that they would not agree. Huh? But it received their amen. From now on, the structure of the church would be changed. Rather than one building, one office in Harare, there would now be 12 offices. Someone is saying, Elder, to you are talking about home source. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There would be 12 offices in Zimbabwe. Each of these offices would handle their own work, have their own secretaries, and handle their own finances and support their own pastors. The decisions must now be made by provincial councils. Guti was to be released. He told the provincial leaders, from now on, I am not going to think for you. I will watch you to see if you know how to make decisions. But you must make them. You must work with the pastors and make them happy. Step by step, we are moving everything to the localized churches. Now listen to this. A further part of the vision, I never saw this before. A further part of the vision was to develop small groups in the homes so everyone could participate and grow. In the African Apostle, written by Gail Irwin around about 19, uh, in the early 80s when he wrote it. So it's there. So, my challenge to all of us, my father cautioned me, I get too excited sometimes, he cautioned me the last deeper life he came and he said, sit down here, don't force people to do the work of God. I got a serious rep reprimand. He says, only get those who are willing. So What is happening at this transition deeper life? All 
all the teachers. started in Silicon Oasis. Then we moved to Maiden South, and God gave us grace to start in Maiden South. Now we're in Damak 2, and we are trying. Hey, Damak 2 is hard. But we are trying, by the grace of God. We are doing the Jericho march. I tell you, we are doing the Jericho march. We are trying. We are trying. But it's not easy, because circumstances are different. My time is about to finish. Does anyone have a question? Does anyone have a question? Now, Jesus comes down from the mountain. To, to, to Jesus, he says, I brought my son to your disciples, but they could not cast them out. Somebody say, what has that got to do with home sales? Hang on a minute. We're getting to the scripture. So Jesus says, you faithless generation, for how long shall I be with you? Then scripture says, when they entered the house, check it out, when they entered the house, Matthew chapter 17. When they entered the house, the disciples then said, why couldn't we cast that demon out? Some things are going to be said on the pulpit, you will not understand them. But in the home cell, you'll be able to ask and say, I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me? Let's go into home cells. We have got this city and this nation to win. God bless you. That was a powerful Bible study by Elder Mac. Thank you. Indeed, home cells are the nutrition our church needs. Amen. Okay, now it's time for the items. So first, we have Andele, who's going to give us another youth game, which is going to be very interesting. <laughs> and then next, we have Auntie Meg, who's going to give us a youth, uh, young adult annou announcement. And then last, we have Elder Matiwaza, who's going to give us some more announcements. Thank you. And I'll be back after that. <laughs> Good morning, church. You two high demands, we're back again with the Gospel Song Association. Woo! Okay, so before I start, can Shalom and, I, and Anna Sue please take three people each? Okay, so while they're picking, for those who are not there, let me say the instructions. So I'm going to say a word, and you need to tell me a song. The, the, the word should either, should either be in the title or in the lyrics. That's how you end the point. And this time, they're going to be three teams. So that's why we're going to be picking three people. So three teams and four rounds to determine the winner. Once they pick you, you can come on stage, please. Players. 
Okay, six people. So I'm going to group them into three teams. Team one, team two, team three. Okay. Let me see the first word. The first word is glory. Glory. Or instructions. Oh, uh, wait. 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 <laughs> Protocols. So I want to say a word. And when I say the word, you think of a song. The word can be in the title or in the lyrics. So the first one is glory. <laughs> let me let me pick. Guys, who do you think we should choose first? One, two, or three? Okay. We were the first. Thank you. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. One point to team one. Second word is blessings. Blessings and honor. One point to team two. Third word is good. Good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Wow. That's two points for team two. Okay. Fourth word is world. 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 In this world, we have the whole world. <laughs> Should we have one more word? One more? Should we have one more word or we're done? One more? Okay, so the last word, this one determines the winner. One point. These have, they have two points. Should we determine that? One? Okay, last word is life. Life. My life is in your hands. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a draw. It's a draw because team one and team two both have a point. You have three or two points? Two points, two points, one point. No prize, on a budget. Uh, thank you all so much. That's it. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, no. Let's try this a different way. Deaconess me again to those who don't know me. And now I'm here for an announcement on the road to Easter. Uh, media, if you could assist. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead. So, as we all know, our conference is here. Somebody say Easter, oh yeah! Easter, oh yeah! You don't seem excited. Easter, oh yeah! Yes. So as we know, all know our Easter will be starting from the 28th and ending on the first 31st of March. And the 28th is a Thursday. So for our Thursday service, it will be at BMM Events, Jijiko, 
And when we say Jijiko, when you get to the metro station, there will be buildings there. That's not the one. You have to go to the building behind. That's where BMM events is. Please don't get lost. You might get there and the service is over. So the BMM event is the building behind the buildings just outside the Jijiko metro station. That will be the place, the, uh, the venue for the service for Thursday, which will be starting at 6.30 p.m. And then on Friday, it will be Voice International, Jijiko also. But this is the building directly outside the Jijiko metro station. As soon as you come outside the metro station, you will see the sign Voice International. That's where the Friday service will be, which is also starting at 6.30 p.m. And then Saturday morning. Yes, on Saturday, starting in the morning, and we'll be here at Radisson Red. So please take note, Thursday, it's at BMM events. Friday, it's at Voice International. Saturday, we'll be here. And we will be starting at 8.30 a.m. for the morning service. Then the afternoon service, which will be starting at 1 p.m., will be for the young adults. On Saturday, please note, the afternoon service for Saturday is for the young adults. And then somebody say official opening. Official opening. Which will be taking place Saturday evening service, which is still also here, which will be starting at 6.30 PM. You do not want to miss the official opening, so you need to get here on time. Hallelujah. And then our Sunday service. As always, we'll still be here, and it will be starting at 7.30 a.m. Did we all get that? Don't worry, we'll be posting, um, I'm trying the next two days, an official flyer with all the dates, but we just wanted to let you know that our Easter is officially here. Only four days to go. You have been seeing the posters, the HODs that are making sure everything is going around. I'm sure you saw the video we posted yesterday. If you did not, please come and see me. I will send it to you. We are doing everything to make sure this would be a blessing. You will, I, I cannot even, you do not want to miss this conference. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good, good. Um, I'm just here to make uh, two announcements. Uh, very straightforward, very, very simple. Amen. Um, I'm here on behalf of the um, budget committee. Amen. I'm here on behalf of the budget committee. Now I know when we start talking about money, uh, people start looking down and, uh, you know, the mood goes down in the church generally, amen. But um, look, it's a good thing, amen. It's for our benefit, hallelujah. Someone say for our benefit, amen. amen. Right, so on the 7th of April, 7th of April, that's the week after the Easter conference, uh, 7th of April, the week after the Easter conference, we'll be having a big day, amen. We'll be having a big day on the 7th of, of April, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the reason why we are telling you now is so that we can all go and prepare and go and be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. So on the 7th of April, uh, we'll be having our big day. We will be coming with, uh, with our contributions uh, for our budget. Amen. Um, we know how much we are supposed to raise. Amen. So when we came here in our launch, uh, we mentioned that uh, we need to raise uh, 450,000 dirhams. Uh, that's at uh, Dubai regional level. And then there's an additional amount in our assemblies. Amen. So 450,000 plus uh, our respective assembly requirements. Amen. So that's what we are working towards. Amen. So on the 7th of April, we are encouraging each and every one of us. Amen to come prepared, amen. Uh, no amount is too small, no amount is too big, but your 
contribution will make a difference. Amen. Um, I'm sure we were all here when Elder Seremani uh, was doing his presentation. We have, uh, you know, the project of the warehouse uh, that we are doing. Amen. So that's part of the contribution that we need that uh, will go towards the warehouse. Amen. So let's come ready. Let's come prepared uh, on the 7th of April. Amen. So that's my first announcement. Amen. Then the second announcement uh, is again linked to uh, the budget. Amen. So tomorrow, uh, sorry, uh, on Monday, which is tomorrow, amen, we have uh, a speaker uh, from Zimbabwe, amen, uh, who will be joining us online, amen. A speaker will be coming, uh, who is in Zimbabwe, they will be joining us online, amen, uh, just to encourage us in the area of giving, amen. I know some of us, uh, we, it's not easy for us to part with our money, amen, but uh, we, we have a speaker who is coming from Zimbabwe who will be joining us online, amen, to encourage us in the word of God. And our speaker uh, will be our bishop, amen, uh, Bishop Msiza, amen, from Zimbabwe, amen. So they'll be joining us online uh, tomorrow uh, from uh, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., amen. So let's make a date and let us be there, amen, you know, so that we can be encouraged by our bishop in the word of God. Amen. Thank you. Back to you, MC. Um, thank you for the announcement. Looks like Easter is going to be a good one this year. <laughs> okay. So now um, we'll next have our secretary, Panache, come up. And then after her, we'll have our advisor come and introduce our speakers for the day. And then after that, we'll then have our lovely praise and worship. And unfortunately, I won't be back again. So it was lovely being your MC for today. My name is Buchilo Matiwaza, signing out. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessing time. Blessing time. Amen. Uh, the word of God says, give and it shall be given back to you. Amen. Good measure, praise down, shaken together. The, uh, shall men pour unto your bosom. Amen. Uh, so we shall call upon our secretaries. I shall pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, the same measure, oh God, that will be used again uh, towards us. Amen. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you so much, praise and worship. Uh, just before we sit down, I am here to do a simple job and introduce the speakers of today as we lead our road to Easter. Amen. Easter, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we have got a packed day for you today. I bring you the triple threat and then followed by the finisher himself. Amen. So we have our speakers for today. We're going to start with our brother, Brother Tanaka. He's a student studying business. He is going to businessify the word today. Amen. And then we have our very own Sister Tinaye. I heard that. I heard that she was here before on stage one time and the people wanted her again. She is here today to give us her rendition of the word. Amen. And then we have, we heard him himself when he was speaking, Brother Adiel, when he gave an answer. His answer was full of richness. His answer was full of vigor. Amen. Let's get ready to hear what he has to say for the word. Hallelujah. And then lastly, we have our very own Dubai region coordinator, the man who knows the Bible. Whenever this man would visit my house, he would always speak a verse from the Bible. I say one verse, he said to me one time, Mark 16, verse 15, where it says, Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to every creature in the world. Amen. He is here to deliver the word to us today. Amen. So let us welcome our speakers today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. We want to greet one another this morning. Amen. We just want to greet one another. Amen. Amen. As we sing this song, give a high five to somebody next to you. Love them, hug them. Hallelujah. We love one another and praise the Lord. We love one another. You are the king of kings. We bless 
my voice. Elder said, can you come and help me do the dance? We want to grab our blessings back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas. We want to grab our blessings. Hallelujah. What up? Shut 
May I ask Elder Ranga to pray for the triple threat. Hallelujah. If there's anyone who has received a word from the Lord, you can see one of the elders. The Holy Spirit is here. If there's anyone who has received a word, come see us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your sweet presence. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering to our hearts. We thank you for your presence that brings healing, deliverance, and restoration. Father, now we pray, Lord Jesus, for the speakers of the word. Anoint them, use them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. So, today my, I am going to talk about fear. And the title of my message is, What does fear mean in the house of a Christian? What is fear in the house of a Christian? Amen. So many of us today, in the modern day, when the going gets tough, we start to complain. We start to wonder what is our lives? What, where is God in our lives? We start to ask questions like, why me, Jesus? Why me? And we start to say, oh God, do this for me now, or else you're not here in my life. We start to challenge God in ways that are not godly. We drown ourselves in constant fear of what if. Some of the things we fear today are not even real. We fear things that we do not know that have a possibility of happening or not happening. It may or may not happen. But as a Christian, it disturbs you. You start to fear it. As a Christian, when you have that kind of fear, it proves you do not know what God can do. It proves you do not know God in your life. See, the reason why other people live trouble-free lives is because the devil knows that these people are lost already. You have trouble in your life because he sees something in you. 
And he wants to stop that from coming out. That's why he instills this fear in us, so that it may hinder our faith. Somebody hear me out. I'm going to ask this question. What is success without failure? What is joy without those sad moments? Therefore, what is a Christian without temptation? If we don't have that temptation, then how can we say we are true Christians? You see, fear comes from uncertainty, and uncertainty is doubt because you're not confident in God. I would like to read the word of God from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 13. And it says, No temptation has overtaken you, except such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. You know, I had a totally different message to preach today. Ever since I started going to Desert Palm, I have always wanted to be here. So I prepared something in advance. But last week God said, what you want to say and what I want you to say is different. It completely changed. You know, last week I was scammed. My parents sent me rent money um, and I was on Airbnb trying to look for an apartment. And I ended up sending about 5,225 dirhams to the wrong person. But you know, God uses his people in mighty ways. My friends told me, Trotsky, we're not going to leave your side because what's worrying us is you don't look worried. You've lost such a huge amount of money, but you, you don't look concerned at all. But in my heart, I knew God has a purpose for me. I knew God will make a way out. I knew God is there for me no matter what. And guess who received an email from the bank just yesterday? Stop guessing, it's me. <laughs> I received an email from the bank and they said, it is our pleasure to tell you that your money wasn't credited into their account. Therefore, it is possible to reverse that transaction. <laughs> Amen. So this means that Romans chapter 8 verse 28 is also true. And God says, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. But what does loving God mean? What does loving God mean? What is being a true Christian? Because as Christians today, we live in constant fear and we say the different things from what we do. I want us all to do an exercise to demonstrate this. I want you all to look at me. Whatever you're doing, stop, look at me right now. Look at me as intimidatingly as possible. I want you to take your index finger up and bring it down to your chin. Look at the person next to you and say, oh well, that's not your chin. This is what we do as Christians in our daily lives. We say something, we say we are Christians, and yet our actions are totally different. Our actions say the opposite thing. We have to learn to be true Christians. And as Christians, that is following the one true commandment we have in the New Testament. And that commandment God said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Ladies and gentlemen, let us change our ways as the church and God will, be rema will remain faithful. Amen. get into it. <laughs> Basically, oh yeah, you can sit down, don't worry. 
Um, basically, my, well not my, but the title and the topic that we're going to be talking about is God's providence through obedience. We have an example from Abraham, which is in the book of Genesis 22, verses 2, which says, oh, Lord have mercy. which says, this is the NLT version, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. In this story, or in this um, saying the Lord is speaking to Abraham telling him to go and sacrifice his son this is a test from the Lord and Isaac is um, the son that Abraham loves dearly he loves him with his whole heart because that was the gift he was waiting for for years and years and years and now God is telling him to sacrifice his son but you know what Abraham obeyed immediately. Abraham followed the word of God. And when Abraham went to the um, altar to go and sacrifice his son, the, the, well, he lifted the knife and God immediately stopped him and said, you know, you don't have to really <laughs> kill your son. It was all a test. And in Genesis 22 verses 16 to 17, can we please have it up? Oh, I have two minutes only. He said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and I have not withheld your son, your only son. Next verse, please. And blessings, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the sea shore. If you obey your Lord, your God... I am telling you, you will receive blessing after blessing. You will receive what it is that you need. You will receive the word of God that you have needed your whole life. And we have another example as Baba Guti, our own father of this church. Hallelujah. Baba Guti is a great example of obedience. When he was in America after finishing Bible school, there was a rich man that approached Baba Guti and asked him what well, he offered him. If you work under me, I will give you buses. You will build many churches. And I will give you many things only if you work under me. Baba Guti hadn't replied by saying yes or no, but he went to the Lord immediately. He went to go and talk to God immediately. After he had prayed... The Lord said, if you work under him, I will not be with you. I will take away my anointing from you. Baba Guti questioned why that is. And God said, God had quoted saying, wait, hold on. God had quoted saying that he is Baba Guti's money. He is Baba Guti's source. And Baba Guti obeyed immediately. God told him to go and teach the word of God. He did so. God told him to preach, to work talents, to build people. And Baba Guti did. He, he did all of that. Tell me why do you not obey your God? Tell me why do you not listen to his word? If he tells you to go and build a country, go and do that. If he tells you to build a nation, go and do that. What is stopping you? Why are you limiting yourself from these blessings? You saw Baba Guti prosper. We are here in his church that he built by obeying the Lord. Obey your God. Obey the King of Kings. Thank you.
What a very powerful preaching. Um, greetings to you all in all protocol observed. Um, today, I want to talk. Yeah, please do sit down. Pardon me. Today, I want to talk about a great man called Ezekiel. The title of my sharing shall be The Power of Being Faithful to God. I will go to Genesis 6. Verse 8 to 14. And Genesis 6, verse 8 to 14 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. He walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it. Coat it with pitch inside and out. Okay. I want to remind you that you are not a fool for being faithful to God. You are not a fool. During Noah's moment, during Noah's time, if you had a degree, if you were a specialist in boat building, if you had done mechanics, if you were the best of the best, the smartest, the greatest, you would not qualify to be saved. The only person who would qualify to be saved was one who was faithful with the Lord. There comes a time where your qualifications mean nothing. There comes a time where your works cannot save you. There comes a time where nobody, where, where your brother cannot save you, where your mother cannot save you, where your father cannot save you, but where your faithfulness can save you. Where the relationship of your God can save you. Where the faithfulness that you have with the Lord can save you. There is a great man that we talk about here so often called Ezekiel Goti. He spent many years with no wife. But he says that he never touched the breast of a woman. That's how faithful he was. And I am reminded of three men in the book of Daniel chapter 3. That in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar built a gold image. An idol of gold. And he said, everyone is to bow to that image. But these three men said that we worship the God of Israel. We shall not bow. And then, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar heard this and was furious. He called his strongest men, according to Daniel 18, he called his strongest men. He said, tie this man up. And he said, make the fire seven times hotter. Make the fire seven times hotter. The fire was so hot that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, the people that threw them, they burnt. They were burnt. Not the people that entered into the fire. The people that threw them were burnt. But then we see Nebuchadnezzar rising from his throne, saying, Who is like the Son of God? Ah, we, did we not throw in three people? And then Hebrews 6 verse 5 says, that inside of us as humans, we have the ability to taste of a world to come. To taste the power of a world to come. What Chadrach and Meshach and Abednego did not know in their faithfulness to the Lord, what they did not know that they were doing, they were, <laughs> they were tasting the power of a world to come by being faithful. According to Hebrews 6 verse 5. Tasting of a power of a world to, be, uh, to come. They invoked a God that was scheduled to come 600 years after their time. To come immediately because of their faithfulness. A God that was scheduled to come 600 years after the time of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Say that they are people who have been faithful to me. And I cannot be seated on my throne watching my people perish. So what shall I do? The son of God. And in an instant, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were all made a consuming fire. 
They were all made the consuming fire. It's like putting fire into fire and expecting fire to be burnt. That's crazy. My time is up. Thank you. Powerful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just give God a clap offering. What a powerful word. He care bim ne serafime zimana zime me zakuwe siti we na uhinwele Jehovah tiko we ni he care bim ne serafime. Robim ne serafime zimana zime meza kuwe siti we na uhingwel Jehovah kiko we So what this song means is the cherub, the cherubims and the seraphims. They shout, holy, holy, inwele, inwele, holy. Hallelujah. No, don't try, brother. It's all right. They, sh they shout, holy, holy. My greeting is uh, Isaiah 6, verse 1. What a powerful word. So uh, the youth did a very good job here. She came with the same book. Uh, you know... This month, we have been hearing from the young adults and the youth. And the reason why is it does not benefit if we don't train them. We have to pass on the baton. They have to be equipped. So you have to support. You have to teach them and guide them. There was a time when I read the book when I was young. And I went to my father and mother and I started preaching to them, thinking I have revelation. I, 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 I went to them and I started saying, you know what, it's like this, like this, like this, like this. And they're just looking at me. Where did you get this information from? I said, I read this book. And they said, no, 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 don't read this book. This is heresy. This is heresy. Preach what we preach. Preach what you hear. Amen. So we were all young. We got lost at some point. We preached wrong doctrine. So if they were preaching something that, I'm not talking of them today. I'm talking of what was going on before. We do it with love, knowing that we're also young. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So we, we, we thank God for the young adults and um, the word they have given us. I'm going to read from an NIV version. And uh, the Bible reads in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, exalted. Uh, the NIV says exalted. Seated on the throne, exalted. Exalted and seated on the throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. The brief uh, background of Uzziah is, Uzziah was a righteous king. He walked in the ways of the Lord. Uzziah, some say he was a cousin of Isaiah. Some say Isaiah was his advisor as a prophet. Some say that Uzziah was, uh, was like an uncle to Isaiah. That's what other theologians say. But what we understand is Uzziah is dead. Uzziah is gone. And Isaiah is mourning. Now, if we read, if we study the life of Uzziah, we notice that 
I'll read the life of uh, this book. The definition Uziah in Isaiah in Second Chronicles chapter two, chapter twenty-six, verse five. He says, Uziah saw the Lord, and he saw the Lord, and whenever he saw the Lord, the Lord prospered him in everything he did. So now we are going to read this book. The definition of genuine prosperity will come only when, when you are prospering spiritually by putting God first in your life. Uzziah put God first. That's the first thing. When your soul is connected to your spirit, then the blessing is for you. When you are saved spiritually, true blessing always starts from inside, reflecting outside. This, that is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uzziah loved agriculture. I'm an agronomist. Uzziah loved agriculture. Uzziah, in, during the time of Uzziah, Israel prospered. Israel did very well. So now we have a situation here. The king would determine the economy of the country. The king, that's why they did invasions. And they would go and take the spoils. Why? Because they have to pro provide for the kingdom. That's why when we say, you, when you come to the kingdom, now God has to provide. The king has to provide. That's the gospel of the kingdom, right? That's why we say, you're not in the kingdom. Get in the kingdom. Right? So, the, the, the nation of uh, uh, Judah, the nation of Judah, prospered under Uzziah. He did very well. Now Uzziah is dead. And the nation is in turmoil. The nation is in confusion. My title of the message is what to do when things are hard, when things are difficult. Uzziah is dead. What shall we do? Where shall we go? The nation was doing very well. And the nation had turned to God. Because the king also determined the religion of the nation. In the spiritual realm, we don't have presidents. There are no presidents. We have kings. So when you're king of a country, there are no presidents in the spiritual world. When a king of a country erects a demonic statue or turns to idols, then the whole nation is turned to idols. So now Uzziah is dead and Isaiah is frustrated, is down. He does not know where to go. Uzziah gave us prosperity. We managed to get gold during the days of Uzziah. We managed to prosper during the days of Uzziah. But now Uzziah is gone. Uzziah is no more. What shall we do? The breadwinner of the kingdom is gone. There's confusion, there's chaos, there's political instability. When kings die, the children of the king, sometimes they'll all be killed. Uzziah is gone. What shall we do? There's confusion, there's turmoil. There's frustration. There's uncertainty. Why? Because the death of a king is, is an impact. Uzziah is gone. What shall we do? Isaiah goes to the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, exalted high above the firmament. So when kings, when you lose a loved one, where do you go? In the year that Ezekiel Guti died, I was frustrated. I was hurt. I did not know what's coming. In the year that I lost my father. In the year that Gogochar Koreka died. I was frustrated. I did not know where to go. In the year Irene died. Oh God, what, what's happening in Dubai? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, oh God? People dying. Where did he go? He went to the temple. And what happened? He saw the Lord seated on the throne, exalted, high above the firmament. Now the Bible says in Ephesians, the Lord, the, 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 we are seated with him high above principalities and powers. 
in the, the Bible says, and the angels were shouting above the throne with cherubims, six with six wings. With two wings, they covered the face. Two wings, they covered the feet. And with two wings, they were flying. And what were the cherubims saying? Holy is the Lord. They were shouting one to another, holy, holy is the almighty. So they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were representing the church. A church is a communication. If I say holy, you say holy. You don't look at me like I'm some crazy person. We say, say holy, you say holy. Like what the angels did. That's what happens in the, in, in, in heaven, the angels they cry holy. When this one says holy, that one says holy. If I say holy, you say holy. Holy! holy. I don't want a dead church. Uziah is dead. And the nation is in turmoil. When you lose a job, where do you run to? When you don't have money, when you have lost your money, where do you go to? When days are evil, where do you go to? To the white garments? Where do you go to? To the false prophets? Where do, do you seek for stones and water? Where do you go to? Uzziah is dead. <laughs> In the year Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne in the train of exotics and the train of his robe filled the temple the train of his robe it speaks of glory and the whole earth was filled with his glory <laughs> hallelujah the word glory is kabod it means weight the reason why you don't have weight is you're not, you're not worshiping God. You're not praising him. When you get the glory, when you get the weight, the kabod, uh, <laughs> even demons at your workplace, they know. They know that this one, uh, when I joined my, where my company where I work, one, one Muslim guy came to me. He stood in front of my counter and he said, sorry. There are so many who came to me and stood in front of my counter. One was a, was a, was a Fijian. Came to me and said, ha, why are you shining? You shine. Why? The glory. One came to me now, a Muslim now, came to me. He's from Kyrgyzstan. He said, you know, Joseph is shines. There are very few, few people who shine. These people are blessed. They shine. Baba Guti used to say, when you get into this church, even your countenance, this is an apostolic church. When you get hold of the apostolic anointing, uh, <laughs> even your face changes. You carry the glory. I am reminded of Moses. The Bible says he cried to God and said, show me your glory. Show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will make my grace, my grace, my grace pass before you. And I will be gracious to you. And I will have mercy on you. Then he says, but you will not see my face. But there is a place in me. Psalms calls it a secret place. <laughs> he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. <laughs> Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> There is a place, there is a place that you have to dwell. There is a place in him. Uh, Isaiah had an encounter. He had an encounter. And he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted up high and exalted. The cherubims above him. The cherubims were shouting holy. They were shouting holy. The moment they shouted holy, God was being exalted. The moment they shouted holy, God was being lifted. And his problem of death was becoming small. The moment you give God the glory, the moment you lift him up, the moment you give him, you lift, you exalt him. That's the moment your problem becomes small. The higher you go, the mountains become small. The 
Am I preaching right? Am I preaching right? Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I correct? The higher you have flown, right? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who has been in the plane. But the higher you go, <laughs> the higher you go, the smaller the houses become, the smaller the problems are. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted. The word I lifted is hoisted. He was being hoisted. He was being thrown in the air. He was being exalted. The moment you start exalting God, you will have an encounter. The reason why you walk the way you walk, you have not seen an encounter. When you encounter God, when you meet him, ah, your countenance changes. When you meet God, when you taste him, when you taste the goodness of God, when you see visions, when you see encounters, things change. The way you see God, he said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted, exalted. Seated on the throne. Now being exalted, that's a position of majesty. Seated is a position of authority. Jesus would sit and teach. He was sitting in the position of authority. It's, it's the moment he's seated on that throne, it means he's in control. It means he has the scepter in his hand. It means he rules and reigns. It means dominion. Oh my God. Dominion is of the Lord. Dom Job then says his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. Verse 3 says, Then at the sound of their voices, the doors shook. The doors and the thresholds shook. Let me tell you one thing. When you shout holy, doors shake. When the seraphim shouted holy, at the sound of, at the sound of their voices, doors and the thresholds shook. They shook. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas in prison. They begin to pray and praise. And the prison door was shaken. Every problem in your life has to be shaken through the praises of God. Has to be shaken through the praises of God. And the Bible says when that happened, the smoke filled the temple. And Isaiah cried, Woe is me! I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among people of unclean lips. When you see God, you look at yourself. You see God, then you look at yourself. The next thing you say is, Woe is me! Woe is me! Woe is me. The reason why they preach consecration, sanctification, and character, and you don't understand it, is because you are not seeing God. <laughs> the moment you see him, the moment you see him, and you look at yourself, you say, Lord, I'm filthy. Lord, I'm filthy. For my righteousness is like a filthy rags before him. Why is me for a man done? And the seraphims, when they heard it, you know what? When you confess it, God will help you conquer it. When you face it, God will help you fix it. Come on, somebody. When you admit your sin, God will help you acquit it. You have to admit. When you are wrong, be corrected. You have to admit. And the seraphims took that call and they touched his lips. And they said, your sin has been purged. Your sin has been purged. You, your iniquity has been removed. The moment, give angels work. Give them work. Give them work. Hallelujah. I don't know whom I'm talking to today. But I am the trumpet God is blowing tonight. That you need to look on Jesus. When things are difficult, you have to submit to him. 
you have to submit to him. And you have to cry, Lord, it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you, oh Lord. I need you. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. You know my faults. You know my shortcomings. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Sanctify me. Consecrate me. Hallelujah. You, you, you begin to cry to God. When the Israelites saw the glory, they were afraid. The Bible says even Moses, at the sight of the glory of God, he was trembling. Oh, you know what? We, we, there's a time whereby you just have to have an encounter. That makes you tremble. There's a time whereby you just have to have an encounter. When you see the days are difficult, when you're about to fall, you go back to the beginning. You go back and say, Lord, I remember that encounter. You spoke to me. You visited me that day. You revealed yourself. It's me, oh God. It's me, oh God. It's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the middle of prayer. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I come with, a, with, with, with filthy rags, but Lord, impact, impute your righteousness on me. This is just showing us where we are going as a church. It was, as a church, as the body of Christ, it was, it was a shadow of things to come. Hallelujah. So when Isaiah was seeing the temple, when Isaiah was seeing all this happening, it was a shadow of things to come. Because now Corinthians says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. Meaning that now we walk with God. We carry God. Then the John Gen Jesus said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is the anointing. This is the spirit. You know what? The, 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 the God, the way you carry God, the amount of God you have is only determined by how much you seek him. It's dependent by your response to the things of God. There's, there's levels of dim, there dimensions of glory. We have seen in uh, uh, Exodus, I've already spoken that, when God was revealing. Then there are dimensions of prophets. There is the face-to-face. -face. There is the dream prophet. There is the vision prophet. These are dimensions. Now, what makes a prophet are three things. It's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discernment of spirit. So now, when, so now, you'll hear now that everyone who has a word from the Lord, it does not mean they are a prophet. And there are very few people who carry these three. For you to be a prophet, you have to have at least two of them. And it, it does not come cheaply. So, I want to challenge someone. I want to challenge someone. The Bible says, desire that you prophesy. But these are levels of glory. Hallelujah. And it's determined by how you see God. So, I see people who are, we have the hunger. You just need to press in. You just need to press in. The Bible says, whosoever, whosoever, when Moses, Miriam, and Aaron when they said wrong things, when Aaron and Miriam said wrong things to Moses, they said, there are three levels. If Moses is my face to face, Ezekiel Gut is my face to face, there are dimensions in the spirit. There are levels, ranks. You, you got to pray to the level that you address demonic activities in the spiritual world. They are level. Every time I get into a city, I can feel the atmosphere. You feel it. You feel it. You feel the spirit. You feel it. And there are places you go and you have encounters. And there are places you go and it's dry. Why? Because of prayer. I was in a certain country in Iran. And, and I saw 
a vision. Three men came to me and they said, Joseph. And I said, who are you? They said, we know you. We even know your family. And they said, we are from the kingdom of darkness. And they told me, the reason why it's like this, like this, is because you have to kill this. And I started praying. And the second, the, after two weeks, I got a miracle. So, I was fasting three, four days and three nights that time. And that's when I, that's when I had that encounter. So, the, it's not about who, you, it's whosoever. If you seek him, you will find him. I hope I'm teaching real good. If you seek him, you'll find him. Isaiah saw the Lord. And whenever he saw the Lord, he prospered. Lord, the Lord prospered him. And he gave him success in all the things he did. What you need is to seek the Lord. What you need is to pray. What you need is to fast. Sometimes we go for days and fasting. Long fast to just subdue the flesh, to just kill the flesh, to tell the flesh you're not in control, to tell the flesh you don't do what you want. We just fast for just to just to just to subdue it. The last that you're struggling with, why can't you just go for a long fast and just say, I want to subdue it? I want to tell the flesh that no ice cream, no McDonald's, no what you will not eat what you want. But you will obey. The Bible says, woe to you when your princes eat for what? For leisure and not for strength. I have determined that I will eat for strength, not leisure. I don't find leisure in food. I eat for strength, not leisure. Woe is you when your princes eat for leisure. And you want the move of God. stand then chapter 8 verse 8 says whom shall we send whom shall we send who shall go before us <laughs> then he said here I am chapter 8 verse chapter 6 verse 8 whom shall we send who shall go before us and he said here I am send me after he had an encounter, after he was purged, after he was consecrated, consecrate me, O oh Lord, consecrate me, sanctify me, sanctify me. Cons every, that's my prayer every day. Set me apart, cleanse me, cleanse me every night. Lord, consecrate me, sanctify me. Sanctify me. Make me clean. Make me clean. Then, whom send me, Lord? You cannot say send me without an encounter. You cannot say send me without being consecrated. You cannot say send me without being purified. You need, you need to have an encounter, to have a place whereby I met... Uh, uh, our father, he cried, creator, if you are there, save my soul. The anointing. Let me tell you one thing about the anointing. The anointing. The anointing is powerful. What I've just said to you, you'll never forget it for the rest of your life. That's the anointing. It will be ringing. You might not be crying, but it will ring. <laughs> Hey, that's the anointing, brother. <laughs> that's the anointing. You say a word, it sticks. That's the anointing. That means you're not speaking to principalities and powers. And they subdue. That's the anointing. The anointing. Ah. Ah. Anointing. Ah. Anointing. The Bible says, because of the anointing, the yoke, uh, the difference is in the anointing. And the anointing comes by seeking God. <laughs> anointing. Ah, Baba would preach and he would teach and it would stick. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Anointing. 
it speaks to the heart. Now let me talk to the youth. Anointing. You don't preach to ears. You preach to the hearts. <laughs> you don't excite. You preach to the heart. When you preach to the heart, you change destinies. <laughs> Anointing. <laughs> the Bible says, I don't want to speak scriptures. But I'll just say it. He, I have found David, my servant, the man after my own heart. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Then he goes on to say, the house of David shall be blessed forever. When I see God, when I do what I do, I'm thinking of the house of Joseph. Bless the house of Joseph and let it be blessed forever. When I got married, when I got married, the year I got married, I had a visitation in the dream. I had a dream. And the Lord said, your father, your father, he never cheated your mother. He never slept with another woman. And then I realized that, okay, the case has been broken. So if I'm to do this, I'm only creating it. My brothers and my sisters, the kiss, when you, now I say Baba Guti is my grandfather. He fathered my father, and I'm my father's child, right? So there is now a generational blessing. You are children of Baba Guti. So you have the same blessing. Baba Guti broke the blessing. My father also benefited, and he changed the generation. You have the same blessing. You are supposed to benefit for it. Hallelujah. Shall we just raise our hands and love God? Send me, Lord. Send me. Purify me. Purify me. Let my house be blessed and let it be blessed forever. Let my house stand and let it stand forever. Let it be blessed. Let my boys not walk in iniquity. Let my boys be righteous, be holy. Lord, bless my house and let it be blessed forever. Come on, come on, tell God. I know you cannot raise your voice. Tell God, tell God what you want. Change your destiny. Change your children's destiny. That generational curse has to be broken. Change it. Change it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. If you have done mistakes, yes, it's in the past. You are now a new creature in Christ. And your children should benefit. Your children will benefit. Your children will benefit from your righteousness. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Seek God. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek Him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Break generational curse. Break it. Break it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house. As for me and my house. As for me. In my house. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Something is happening. Transactions are happening. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Push, pray, 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 pray for your children. Pray. Let your house be blessed forever. Let your house be the, like the house of Jacob. There shall be no divination in Israel. No, no witchcraft to stand against Judah. Come on, come on. No witchcraft to stand against your children. No divination will come. No, no, come on, come on. Let my house, oh God, be blessed forever. Let my house... Let my house be blessed forever. 
let it stand, let it stand. My children shall know God. My children shall please God. Oh God, oh God. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Break generational curses. Talk to your God. Talk to your God. Talk to your God. Iniquity shall not be in your house. Iniquity shall not dwell near your tent. Break that curse. Break it. 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 Come. come on, come on. I break that curse. I break it. Shut up, man. Shut up, let the house of David, let the house of Joseph, let the house of Emmanuel, let the house of Seth, let the house of Matt, let the house of Paramba. Let it be blessed forever. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let the house of Munding, the house of Garwe, the house of Munding, Whatever your name is, come on. Let it be blessed forever. Bless my house, Lord. 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 Oh. Come on. Come on. Push. Fight for your children. 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 We break that kiss. That kiss. Iniquity shall not dwell in your house. Iniquity shall not dwell in your tent. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Come on, I tell you. Push, push, be blessed forever. 
Saka Namaha, Rebele Kosaka, Yakata Karamaka Sika, Rebaba Kasakata, Rebele Kosakata, Yande Rama Hatata, Tarabe Kasa, Shama Baba Jesus, 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 the glory of the Lord, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood 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 of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, let us tell the Rehava, the Lanari of Casanama, let us tell the Lanari of Casica, mercy and goodness shall follow us for the days of our life. The Lanari of Casica, the Lanari of Casanama, the Lanari of Casica, break in the name of Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. In the name of Jesus Christ, 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 Spirit of the living God, the God of Ezekiel, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Pray. Pray. The glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is our strength. The glory of the Lord. Fight of the blood of Jesus. Fight of the blood of Jesus. The fight of the blood of Jesus. The fire of the blood of Jesus. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. We are going somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. The God of Ezekiel, the God of Ezekiel, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by the wayside. You are precious, more oh precious than gold. What a wonder you are, you are brighter than the morning star. You are fair, much fair than the lily that grows by the wayside. You are precious, oh precious. Yeah. Right. 